This is not the church of Joseph Smith. This is not the church of Joseph Smith. This is not the church of Joseph Smith. I have faith that the Constitution will be saved as prophesied by Joseph Smith. But it will not be saved in Washington. This is not the church of Joseph Smith. Wow. Travis Wayne Goodsell. I was prepping for a completely different video when I stumbled across another LDS Church History bombshell. Wow. I had the thumbnail all prepared. I'm not sure if it'll still work. It could. We'll see. Wow. Third Nephi, chapter 27, verse 7. Therefore, whatsoever ye shall do, ye shall do it in my name. Therefore, ye shall call the church in my name. And ye shall call upon the Father in my name, and that he will bless the church for my sake. And how be it my church, save it be called in my name. For if a church be called in Moses' name, then it be Moses' church. Or if it be called in the name of a man, then it be the church of a man. But if it be called in my name, then it is my church. If it so be that they are built upon my gospel. Because you can have people fraudulently claiming to be my name but not be his gospel to fool and deceive people right but that's not the bombshell <laughs> President Russell M. Nelson has demanded that the name of the church be officially the full name of the church, though he allows for the nickname of the Church of Jesus Christ. Because their website wouldn't want Nelson to be a hypocrite. <clears throat> and so our scriptures have been altered from the Joseph Smith papers to emphasize this. Says it's section 20. No, it's not. 
Where's the input text? It's not Dr. Kevin's one. Where is it? Don't tell me they've altered my program. How can they do that? <laughs> well, it says, The rise of the Church of Christ in these last days being 1,830 years since the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the flesh, it being regularly organized and established, agreeable to the laws of our country, by the will and commandments of God in the fourth month and on the sixth day of the month which is called April so is that his name Christ because it has to be done in his name no Christ is a title <clears throat> you take upon yourselves the name of Christ after the initiatories. Melchizedek Priesthood. The priesthood of the Christ as a title. And I've gone over the name of Amen. But I found out a while back, and I didn't really do a video on it. Uh, it's well established, Fayette. Ah, that's what I can look up. It's bugging me. I gotta find it. There's April. And for some reason, they're in harmony. Section 10, that's not in 1829, or 28, what was it? Yeah, it's not in 1828, it's 1829 when Section 10 was given. It's bugs me. I just found it and had to, now we do May. <laughs> Is it not in our scriptures anymore? <laughs> Going on, oh, we're in 1829. Uh, let's get to 1830. <laughs> March. <laughs> yeah, it is section 20. Okay. So, why then? Yeah, alright. I'm distracted because of the bombshell. <clears throat> In 1834, May 3rd, let me bring that back up. I did a copy and paste of it. It's the minutes of a meeting uh, of a conference of the elders of the Church of Christ, section 20. That's what it was in the beginning. And so four years later, 
which church was organized in the township of Manchester, Ontario County, New York, on the 6th of April, 1830. That's interesting. <clears throat> because as I've told you, when you're doing church history, you've got to make sure to have each and every single page of names, places, dates, events, etc. So that uh, when you have crossovers, you can go, oh, wait, he was there at the same time. <clears throat> and so uh, this is one of those where uh, the distance cannot be possible to have been made. It had to be Manchester, not Fayette. But nonetheless, it was not organized. It says right here in section 20 that it was organized, agreeable to the laws of our country, organized and established, but not in the way of establishing a corporation, incorporating of the church. But nonetheless, that's not the bombshell. I'm leading up to it to help prepare you. So then you'll be d disappointed. Uh, that, I wasted all my time. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, Joseph Smith Jr. was chosen moderator. You have to have a moderator for this? Weird. And Frederick G. Williams, it's almost like a Freemasonry organization. and Oliver Cowdery were appointed clerks. Uh, after prayer, the conference proceeded to discuss the subject of names and appellations when a motion was made by Sidney Rigdon. If you're unfamiliar with Sidney Rigdon, Sidney Rigdon's the one who is the major author of the Book of Mormon. And I don't understand why Mormons all of a sudden turn into vile, evil people who want to harm those who say such things. It does not hurt you. Your life, liberty, and property are not jeopardized because Sidney Rigdon wanted, or was the major author of the Book of Mormon. It does not harm your life, liberty, and property for me to tell you, Joseph Smith Sr. is the author of the rewritten 116 pages. So why the hell do you have to turn into an evil person who has to harm other people who would tell you the truth? That has never made sense to me. And that was the original video I was going to do. <laughs> Why are you angry and feel that you've been hurt because Jesus is not our Christ? That it's Mor a Nephi, not Moroni. That it's gold plates, not golden plates etc 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 why do you guys have to turn into such vile evil haters of mankind seeking to destroy and cover up church history and here's why the bombshell and seconded by Newell K Whitney that the church be known hereafter as, by the name the Church of the Latter-day Saints. So May 3rd, 1834 was a conference and I don't see Brigham Young in attendance. Brigham Young was not a leader of the church. Thomas B. Marsh was the leader of the president presidency of the of the Twelve Apostles then. 
And so, what's up with that? So you have David Whitmer. He was aware of it, so apparently he was in the conference. Because he refers to it in his An Address to All Believers in Christ in 1887. Ten, 11 years after Brigham Young put in section 132, which is important because you have the date, 1887, the person, David Whitmer, the event, his book, An Address to All Believers in Christ. What is he talking about? He's talking about section 132 concerning polygamy. So how many decades have gone by? Exactly. But, again, where is Christ? So I've been teaching you guys this, and you're angry with me, and you don't want to listen, and you want to hurt and destroy me. And you have. As YouTube harms me with the slowing down of the processing, with the algorithms that silence and censor me. <clears throat> Again, the initiatories. You become Christ's. See, in the Catholic Church, members, Catholics, are not saints. You have to be magical perform some kind of a miracle that qualifies for the approving vote to become a saint and it's usually long after you're dead like St. Patrick for example and so do you see what's being done here Go back to the Book of Mormon again. It could be the church of a man. Call it in the man's church. It could be the church of Moses. Call it in Moses' church. But my church is to be called in my name. And he doesn't give his name, does he? We just assume it's Jesus. <laughs> and that's the whole point gone over with you the first vision you have to apply it to what the first creed of Christianity is because the first creed of Christianity established their Christ as Jesus and Jesus says that's an abomination and you guys are mad at me. You want to harm me because of the truth. And so do you see what I mean when I if any of you saw that part of the video the other day? That Joseph Smith is our founding Christ. And successors, which again, I was going to go over that in the original video here, but I'm not. Because of the bombshell that I still haven't gotten to yet. <clears throat> and so, if Brigham Young properly succeeded Joseph Smith, he would be the next Christ. The success of Christ. Nelson, if all things were done properly would be the Christ right now in the latter days him Nelson do you comprehend that and that's not even the bombshell <laughs> because Nelson is not he doesn't even claim it he says Jesus. He himself said this will be called the Church of Jesus Christ. Which 
all of you have access to the internet, all of you have access to Google search, all of you have access to type in Council of Nicaea. And if you don't know how to spell Nicaea, it should pop up for you to see so that you can click on it. And then Wikipedia page. It has it in English for you as well as in Greek. It is not a sin to learn and gain intelligence. But it was September 6th who caused the church to seek to harm them. The prophets of the church harmed September 6th because they learned about church history. And the prophets didn't like that and harmed them. They fired them first and foremost, then excommunicated them, and then ruined their reputation by smearing their name and then going on an anti-intellectual kick at the pulpit of conferences. And that actually backfired on them, especially when the internet came around and social media. Because of this name change, here we go, We get to Kirtland. As members of the church, we're upset. Which members of the church? Because the leadership approved all this. Danites. I've gone over this with you before. It was the Kirtland Saints who caused the problems had infiltrated the church, had not yet risen to power in leadership. They were upset that they took out the title Christ. The Danites demanded it be restored to Christ and Joseph had to uh, compromise because Joseph already knows he already told us in 1838 <laughs> he, well, it's in the Book of Mormon Second Nephi chapter 3. You have to refer to Deuteronomy 18. Not in the footnotes. Hmm, wonder why. Because then that would take you to Acts chapter 3, verses 22 to 23. That would take you to Joseph Smith, history in 1838 with Nephi appearing to Joseph Smith. Joseph is the Christ. So again, Nelson comes out and says, this is not the church of Joseph Smith. It is the church of Jesus Christ. And then he pulls a little error. Little to say the least <laughs> that the name the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints the organization is the cornerstone of the church <laughs> and then places Jesus the idol god statue on top of it and says Jesus is the chief cornerstone 
There is no chief cornerstone. It is the cornerstone. You've already said it's the church, not Jesus, that is the cornerstone. What are you doing? Did somebody not instruct you properly on what a cornerstone is? I know you were busy being a medical doctor, heart surgeon for most of your life. Maybe you don't understand building techniques and building terminology. <laughs> if you're the cornerstone, you're the chief cornerstone. And so, the church, you established as the cornerstone, thus the chief cornerstone. You can't then say Jesus is now the chief cornerstone. You placed him on top. You built Jesus on top of the cornerstone. <laughs> and you're trying to fool Mormons. But that's the whole point, guys. The Danites demanded it be Jesus. Where Joseph is the Christ. Did you see what happened? Did you see the bombshell? The Danites, and thus Brigham Young, Change the name of the church to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They pressured. They rose up, took over authority, the leadership of the church. In 1838, while Joseph Smith was in Liberty Jail, with that election fraud that occurred, what was it, Davies County? There the two counties. I did the whole video on it. So, wow. You know, they changed everything. I've said it before, but yeah, the Danites. And so, every single president of the church of Jesus Christ are again confirmed as Danites. And that's why they demand and insist that it's Jesus Christ as their God, their Christ. And get angry and harm any Mormon who dares to research church history. When it's right there in front of us, you know, creed. I didn't know what a creed was when I was a kid when I first came across it because some teacher went over it for us. What's a creed? I didn't know. There was no footnote that explained it. You know, it doesn't show the nice Nicene Creed like we can find out now. And so when Nelson tells you to stay off the internet, stay off social media, stay away from the news, he again confesses the church is a fraud. And when you get angry, when you cause harm, even if you think it's not harmful to put a thumbs down when nobody else but the Creator sees your thumbs down you are th making a threat now it's even more of a threat because it's now targeted to the Creator not for others to see oh yeah we disapprove you should disapprove too no now it's a direct targeted threat to the Creator and you guys know it and that's why you do it you purposely intend to harm you are not Mormon the name of the church tells the world you are not Mormon and of course the creed of, Mor of Mormonism says you're not Mormon we believe in being honest, true, 
chaste, benevolent, virtuous, and in doing good to all men. Harming people is not doing good. Harming people, justifying it by saying, well, he was telling the truth about us. He needs to be silenced. And so, yes, now you understand the temple. You have to kill yourself if you reveal the sacred secret that the Church of Jesus Christ is going to take over the governments of the world. That's their plot. They're not stopping with the church. That's why the Book of Mormon was written. It is their full intent and purpose to destroy and take over. Exactly after the pattern that they did to Joseph Smith's church. And they will change the name. Their minions already have the name Des Nat.